This is top 30, 30 stories in 30 minutes. At least nine people who visited Disneyland recently developed Legionnaire's disease, causing the park to take action. Three others who visited Anaheim but did not go to the theme park also got sick. All of the patients were between the ages of 52 and 94. Disneyland shut down two of its 18 cooling towers after tests showed it had increased levels of the bacteria that causes Legionnaire's disease. The disease is a severe case of pneumonia, usually contracted by breathing mist from contaminated water. There haven't been any new cases since in September, but the cooling towers will stay closed until health officials verify the contamination is gone. That process normally takes a couple of weeks. These are your quick hits. A 7.3 magnitude earthquake hit the border region between Iraq and Iran on Sunday. More than 4,000 people are injured and more than 350 are dead, with the death toll expected to rise. A guitar owned and played by Bob Dylan was auctioned off to an anonymous buyer for $396,500 over the weekend. The 1963 Martin D28 acoustic guitar was sold by Dylan's guitar repairman, who originally bought it from the famed singer-songwriter in 1977 for 500 bucks. And finally, a team of nurses and grieving relatives conspired to sneak a dying man's dog into the hospital so he could say goodbye. David King's granddaughter put out this tweet of the dog in a purse just one day before her grandfather passed away. Sometimes rules were made to be broken. Alabama Republican Roy Moore says he is suing the Washington Post. At events this past weekend, Moore called the paper's reports that he had sexual contact with a minor in 1979 fake news. He also said the Democratic Party, as well as establishment Republicans and the news media, were conspiring to keep him out of office. The Post quoted four women by name. One said Moore sexually assaulted her when she was 14, and three others said they were pursued by Moore while they were between the ages of 16 and 18, and he was an assistant district attorney in his 30s. On Monday, a fifth accuser came forward, alleging Moore assaulted her as a minor. Moore has long been a controversial figure in Alabama. He was removed from the state Supreme Court bench twice, one for refusing to remove a giant statue of the Ten Commandments. He's also argued that gay parents should be sent to prison and have their children seized by the government. In September, Moore defeated Luther Strange in a primary to see which Republican would run for a Senate seat vacated by Jeff Sessions when he became Attorney General. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said Monday that Moore should exit the race adding, quote, I believe the women. Moore has said he isn't going anywhere. Let's go to the New York Stock Exchange for our Fox Business Minute with Laurie Rothman. Laurie. I'm hearing that Bill Gates is building a smart city. That's right, Richard. A real estate investment firm owned by Bill Gates recently paid $80 million for a giant plot of land in Arizona to develop it into a smart city. It is expected that there will be 80,000 residential units in addition to space for public schools, offices, commercial buildings, and retail outlets. We've all been there. We buy drugstore foundation, try it on at home, and turns out it's the wrong shade. Well, Walmart is here to help with that with a virtual reality system called Modiface. The retailers have begun testing this digital system at five stores across the country. But who knows, if it's successful, perhaps it'll be implemented in more. If you've noticed more ready-to-drink coffee on the shelves of your grocery store, that's because companies are seriously cashing in on this niche. Sales of this coffee rose 29% in just a year. And Laurie, tell me, why do you think millennials are buying more of this stuff? Well, Richard, younger consumers say it's a healthier alternative to energy drinks and soda. It's also cheaper than a specialty drink at a coffee shop. Time was another reason is people are increasingly consuming on the go and don't always want to wait to get their caffeine fix. More Top 30 when we return. One of the Houston Astros' best players is paying tribute to another Houston athlete with a special gift and message. Jose Altuve plays second base for the Astros and was one of the most feared hitters in the lineup. He sent a bottle of whiskey along with a handwritten note to another beloved Houston sports star, J.J. Watt. Watt is a defensive player for the Houston Texans and helped raise more than $37 million for Hurricane Harvey relief efforts after the storm. Watt tweeted a picture showing the whiskey bottle. It had a 
cover which said 2017 World Series champs, hashtag Houston strong. Altuve's handwritten note was also pictured. It read in part, from one H-Town brother to another, thanks for all you've done this year for the city we call home. I hope you'll accept this fine whiskey gift I gave to all my teammates because to me, you're absolutely part of the squad. Not everyone was cheering for the Astros in the World Series, but this classy move is something we can all appreciate. A horrifying new report says the air quality in Delhi is so bad it's equivalent to smoking 44 cigarettes a day. Visibility has been reduced and the city is covered in a thick white fog of pollution as air quality ratings in India's capital continue to reach frightening levels. The World Health Organization considers anything above 25 to be unsafe, while Delhi currently registers at more than 1,000. Experts say the pollution is a combination of smoke from garbage fires and crop burning, vehicle exhaust, and road dust. Doctors have warned residents of long-term health implications, and Delhi's chief minister describes the city as a gas chamber. It puts things in perspective for those of us who can just go outside and take a breath of fresh air. The opioid crisis is taking an especially high toll on American veterans. Opioids are blamed for more than 64,000 deaths last year alone. It's an increase of over 20% from the year before. According to federal data, veterans are more than twice as likely as non-veterans to die from accidental overdoses. It's a figure that reflects the high number of former soldiers facing chronic pain from battlefield injuries, especially those who fought in Afghanistan and Iraq. Ironically, one of the agencies responsible for safeguarding former service members has taken some blame. Newsweek reported that the Veterans Administration overprescribed opioid painkillers for more than a decade. The US has struggled with finding a solution. One bill by Senator John McCain, the Veterans Over Medication Prevention Act, has stalled in Congress. A White House commission has recommended more alternatives to opioids for patients, but more funding is needed to do so. A spokesperson for the VA says they are trying to address the issue and have treated more than 68,000 people for opioid addiction since March of this year. That is more people than were killed in Vietnam, Iraq, and the war in Afghanistan combined. There is a star nicknamed Zombie because it has exploded numerous times but refuses to die. Astronomers are baffled and say it might be the first supernova of its kind. It was discovered in 2014 when it exploded, after which most stars continue to shine for about 100 days because they're hundreds of millions of light years away. But this one was different. It continued to brighten and dim over the course of the next 600 days. After looking over archives, they discovered this same star exploded in 1954, survived, and has continued to explode and survive all over again. We're getting a rare behind the scenes look at President Obama's time in office through images capturing some of his most tense, emotional and memorable moments. Pete Souza was the official White House photographer and released a book showcasing some of his favorite pictures. Many pictures are the president on the job in the Oval Office or meeting with world leaders. But there are also ones that show a softer side, including his love for Michelle as the couple heads to an inaugural ball in 2009. A candid look at quality time spent with Sasha and Malia in the snow, and countless pictures as the president shows his affection for children of all ages. Sousa estimates taking almost two million pictures over the eight years. And in the foreword for the book, President Obama wrote that besides his family, he spent more time with Sousa than anyone else in the world. There is an extraordinary new trend happening with kids and cyberbullying that is really quite hard to believe. According to research conducted by Samia Hinduja, a professor of criminology at Florida Atlantic University and co-director of the Cyberbullying Research Center, 6% of kids aged 12 to 17 are going online to bully themselves. Hinduja says, we have a tendency to demonize the aggressor, but in some cases, maybe one out of 20, the aggressor and target are the same. The latest fad among American teens caught the attention of researchers after it was discovered that 14-year-old Hannah Smith from Leicestershire 
England hanged herself after being bullied. But it was later discovered the threatening messages were coming from Hannah's own IP address. Patricia Cavazos, an associate professor of psychiatry at the Washington University School of Medicine, says evidence suggests that a mix of undiagnosed mental health issues and social media might be the culprit. Researchers have isolated the trend and are calling it digital self-harm. But the question researchers want to answer is why are these teens doing this to themselves? A college football player with one hand is inspiring others and also catching the attention of NFL scouts. Shaquem Griffin plays linebacker at the University of Central Florida. He was born with a rare birth defect that kept his hand from fully developing. His fingers would hurt intensely whenever he touched anything. So his mother made the tough decision to have his hand amputated when he was just four years old. But that hasn't slowed him down on the football field. He won the conference's Defensive Player of the Year award last year. He's having another Another great season and NFL teams are starting to notice. While making the pros may be an uphill battle, Griffin has already proven he can overcome obstacles to reach his goals. In today's hometown stories from Fox 9 Minneapolis, Andrea Jenkins made history as the first African-American transgender woman to be elected to a major city council. She won a race for the Ward 8 seat for the city of Minneapolis. For the past 12 years, she's been a policy aide to two other city council members. Andrea said she didn't run because she was transgender, she ran because she wanted to work on the local issues she cares about. While she's thrilled about her victory, she's even more excited to get to work. Well, Andrea is just one of many success stories from a fresh wave of women running for political office. Fox 5 New York profiled the bipartisan organization Vote Run Leave that trains women how to run for office. Executive Director Aaron Velarde said women used to talk themselves out of running for office. Now they're talking themselves into it. One woman inspired to run for her township committee in New Jersey is Amalia Duarte. I was angry. Um, I have time to do it. And I looked at those people on the township committee and I said, I need to be out there. In our final story from Fox 13 Tampa Bay, Maria was walking home one night when she heard the whimpers of a kitten trapped in a sewer beneath a storm drain. Unable to lift the grate herself, she enlisted the police for help. Unfazed, she jumped right into the sewer and rescued the tiny kitten. He's moving into my place and I'm keeping him and I'm gonna spoil him. And whether it's a girl, I don't know if it's a girl or a boy. This chance encounter landed this kitten with its forever home. If you've been on a plane recently, you've probably noticed the seats getting smaller, and that's on purpose. While the pitch, which is the industry term for the distance between seat rows, is 30 inches on most airlines, some low fare airlines have shrunk the pitch to 28 inches. Spirit embraces their reputation for small seats. Its website claims they are a cozy airline and can offer cheaper fares because of it. JetBlue and Virgin America, on the other hand, exceed 30 inches. Other airlines have faced a backlash from customers over proposals to lower the seat pitch. Meanwhile, airplane seat manufacturers are making ergonomic models that use high-tech materials to cut down on seat bulk. So they say while the distance between the seats may decrease, it won't feel like it because the seats themselves are thinner, which sounds like total spin. Last month, Mike Edgett tweeted his discovery. The only people KFC followed were five Spice Girls and six people named Herb, the same as their famous 11 herbs and spices recipe. According to Fox News, Edgett's tweet pointing out the chain's sense of humor has earned over 715,000 likes. And it's safe to say KFC likes him too, as Edgett's latest viral post is a beautiful painting in his likeness sent from the fast food chain themselves. The artwork is set in a majestic mountain landscape with Edget piggybacking on Colonel Sanders while holding a chicken drumstick. The brains behind the commissioned painting are from the same marketing company who hilariously had KFC include the romance novella Tender Wings of Desire with food orders for Mother's Day. I guess a commissioned painting is a healthier reward than a lifetime supply of fried chicken. 
A group of senators and CEOs of major companies think getting rid of social security numbers will help prevent future data breaches. The topic came up during a hearing aimed at preventing future data breaches that stem from hacks on companies like Equifax and Yahoo, which compromise the personal data of hundreds of millions of Americans. The group of senators and CEOs agreed that social security numbers are permanent, which can make them a privacy nightmare. One potential solution that came up during the hearing mimicked Brazil's system, which issues digital certificates to citizens, which last up to three years. Those certificates can quickly be revoked or reissued in case of fraud. White House officials have said they're interested in abandoning social security numbers, but so far they have yet to make any moves in that direction. Brilliant Minds have created the first robotic exoskeleton designed to help kids with cerebral palsy walk again. Researchers from the National Institutes of Health found that this groundbreaking technology can specifically treat crouch gait. Crouch gait is a prominent characteristic in kids with cerebral palsy. It's also known as flexed knee. It consists of excessive hip and knee flexion. Since it's hard for children with this condition to stand in an upright position, their muscles and tendons shorten and harden, often oftentimes resulting in deformity of their joints. This new exoskeleton is like giving these kids superpowers. It's like putting each leg in a robotic cocoon that powers their knees to extension at key parts in the walking cycle. Many of us don't think a lot about how awesome it is to walk every day unassisted. But for kids with cerebral palsy, walking alongside their friends at school is a dream that with this new technology may very well come true. New technology being developed for the human brain could destroy your privacy. Over a dozen companies are currently working on brain-computer interfaces. Tesla founder Elon Musk has a startup called Neuralink that wants to build one that would allow humans to communicate with computers at the speed of thought. Other researchers have successfully tested brain implants in the treatment of diseases like epilepsy and Parkinson's, where they can be used to correct misfiring brain signals. Now a group of 27 neuroscientists and ethicists known as the Morningside Group warn these devices create a new risk of being hacked. They say the technology could allow people's thoughts, decisions and emotions to be exploited by hackers or corporations and manipulated against their will. People wanting to sell you things, manipulating your thoughts, decisions and emotions against your will. Imagine that. When corrections officer John Hassan saw the way therapy dogs helped people with PTSD, he knew bringing one into Woodland Correctional Center would change prisoners' lives. But he didn't know it would also help taxpayers. But first, he needed to get warden Jody D'Angelo on board. She admits she was skeptical, but soon had a change of heart. According to the Fox affiliate in Detroit, when Hassan was given the green light, he worked with Stiggy's Dogs, a group that rescues and trains therapy dogs, including Sadie, the therapy dog prisoners would come to love trust and rely on. The prison's physician, Dr. Terry White, said since Sadie started making rounds, hospital visits have dropped dramatically, saving taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars. But Sadie's much more than that to the prisoners. Schizophrenic inmate Carl Fields says Sadie changed his life. Basically, she gave me uh, uh, something to look forward to. See, everyone needs a best friend. You will need to find another cliche to describe two things that don't mix because scientists have a new way to combine oil and water. Researchers at MIT mix oil with a soap-like substance called surfactant. It can bond to both liquids. The oil was then placed in a humid chamber and cooled. This formed drops of condensation, which then spread throughout the oil. Unlike a bottle of oil and vinegar salad dressing that has to be shaken after just a few minutes, the team said this mixture can remain stable for months on end. It's also less expensive than other methods currently available. The reasons have to do with the size of the water droplets. Water is denser than oil, but using this process, Process, the droplets are so small they're hard to see under a microscope. At that size, they aren't pulled to the bottom of the chamber by gravity. Researchers say it could extend the shelf life of expensive prescription drugs that contain unstable mixtures. You'll now have to amend that cliche to they go together like oil and water unless the oil and water in question have been mixed with soap-like substance surfactant. 
Former Facebook president Sean Parker is speaking out against the social media giant, claiming it puts children's mental health at risk. Parker says the company's founders, including current CEO Mark Zuckerberg, intentionally built Facebook to consume as much human attention as possible. He went on to say that the social media app exploits a vulnerability in human psychology and criticized its effects on children. God only knows what it's doing to our children's brains. It literally changes your relationship with society, with each other. After stepping down as Facebook's president in 2005 as an early stockholder, Parker continued to make billions of dollars off the company. He's got a point, but the billions of dollars he continues to make off the exact thing he's condemning make it a little harder to take. That's it for today's top 30. Here are some stories coming up that you need to know. A new survey says cord cutting is on the rise. We'll tell you which streaming services came out on top. This island is sinking and the waters around it are rising. We'll tell you about a community of Americans in danger. And you'll hear why this bride's vows had everyone at her wedding crying tears of joy. These stories and more are coming up on the next top 30.